This morning, we're looking at John 20, 1 through 10, John, I mean, Luke 24, 9 through 12. Um, no one in the story yet has seen the resurrected Christ. No one in the story is looking for a resurrected Christ. The women go to the tomb expecting to find what? His body. They expect to find a body. They expect to find a tomb with a rock in front of it. They are not expecting the resurrection. That's where they are at. Um, you know, harmonizing or putting these appearances or the events in order is hard to do. Each of the writers has a different goal in mind for his audience. So one tells one thing that the other does not. Or one emphasizes something that the other writers do not. So um, I'm not sure which order we should look at this in. Uh, Luke 24 seems to follow after seeing the angels and in coming to tell the disciples. Mary Magdalene seems to have gone to the tomb very early, still dark, and she sees that the rocks move. And that's apparently, maybe, apparently, all that she sees is that the rock is moved. And so she believes that the body has been disturbed. Is that a fair assessment? Is that a fair assessment of what you see in John 20, 1 through 10? Or at least in the first part of it. Um, and perhaps at this point, she assumes that the enemies of Christ have done something with the body. Uh, they have further uh, desecrated him, uh, insulted him, insulted the people that believed in him. Um, so she leaves the tomb immediately. She goes and tells Peter and John, now, um, it may be that Peter and John are in two separate locations. They're close, but maybe not at the same place. And uh, verse uh, 10 may imply that. So at this point, all she knows is that the rock is moved. The tomb appears to be empty. And she has gone to tell Peter and John. Um, and again, um, they, they um, may be in two separate locations. Um, Peter and John are often together in the Gospels and especially in the early parts of that. If you think about it, Peter, James, and John formed what is called that inner circle with Jesus in the Gospels. They saw some they saw certain things that the rest of them did not experience, such as the transfiguration, 
the raising of Jairus' daughter. Um, it's interesting that Peter and John are the ones that prepare the Passover meal in Luke 22. They prepare the Passover meal. John, in the book of John, uh, plays a role in having Peter admitted to the high priestly palace during the trial of Jesus. Um, then we find them frequently together in the book of Acts. And that is especially true in chapters 3 and 4 of the book of Acts. So they're often together. So uh, Luke only records that uh, Peter headed out to the tomb. And we'll try to look at those uh, together. Um, but John and Peter apparently have some sort of a foot race. And uh, John beats him. Now, why that's the case, some of the ideas are kind of ridiculous. Uh, that they suggest that, uh, well, P, uh, John loved Jesus more than Peter. Uh, I think that one should be just dismissed out of hand real quick. Uh, Peter loved John. I mean, Peter loved Jesus. Uh, he sometimes shot his mouth off. He sometimes acted in, on impulse, but he loved Jesus. Uh, even at the point of the denial, he still loved Jesus. Uh, maybe John's younger. Maybe John's in better shape. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have had any contact with the Chosen series. Uh, it provides backdrops to some of the stories in the Bible. Uh, and uh, it does some interesting things with uh, with the imagination of how these characters might have interrelated before they became followers of Christ. Um, and, uh, you know, what they might have been like. Um, that's, that's one example of, of that. So, uh, John arrives at the tomb first, but he doesn't enter. Um, uh, he bends down, he looks in, he, he ponders what he has seen. Um, that word that is used there for stooping or bent down is used five times in the New Testament. It's used in Luke 24, 12, uh, John 20, 5 and 11, James 1, 25, and 1 Peter 1, 12. And it means to uh, look intently at. It means concentration. You know, in those first passages, it's all about the resurrection of Jesus. So, what does John see? What does John see? Apparently, we're supposed to get the idea that he sees the grave clothes that look like they're intact and 
in the form of a human body. So maybe he concludes, I don't know how the rock moved, but he's still here. Does that make sense? But when Peter gets there, he's not going to uh, hang around looking outside. So he goes into the tomb. Um, my understanding of how tombs were built is that the entrance is quite small. It's actually about three feet tall and maybe about three feet wide. So it's going to be kind of tough to just walk in. You're going to have to stoop down. And then there's probably a step down to get inside it. And then once you're inside, you can stand upright. So there's a little bit of an effort to get into the tomb. There would be shelves inside on which bodies uh, are placed. And it may be that because of where the body was placed inside the tomb, they couldn't completely see, you know, uh, that the headpiece was in a different spot. Um, then some indication is that, you know, the bodies are left there for about a year or so. And then when it's fully decayed, they come back and they put the body, I mean, the bones in a little box called an ossuary. And then there was, those are set inside the tomb. So John sees these linen wrappings and uh, like I said, you know, apparently they still form the shape of the body. Uh, they kind of were kind of glued together by all the spices and ointments and oils that were uh, used. So, Peter looks. If you turn back to the Gospel of Luke, uh, and um, let's let's clear a couple of points out there, and uh, then. Uh, The women report to the 11 as it's recorded in Luke 24, 9 through 12. Uh, and uh, Luke uh, 24 points out that they report to all the rest. So that would include probably the 120 of Acts 1, 13 through 15, which includes the 11, includes other disciples, and includes other women. But how do they hear the report? How do they hear the report? It's like crazy talk. In fact, the term that Luke uses there is a medical term. It's a medical term to describe the babbling of a fevered or insane mind. So 
What are these people not looking for? A resurrection, a resurrected body. None of them are looking for a bodily resurrection of Jesus. And probably it dismisses some of those other ideas that are thrown about. The idea that they all had a mass hallucination. Or, you know, probably takes care of that too. Because they weren't looking for, they weren't dreaming of a resurrection. Now, when, when we get there uh, to Peter and John being at the tomb, if it's as we suppose or speculate that the shroud, uh, the wrappings are in the shape of the body being there, you know, uh, then they go in, they see that it, the body's not there. So they've got a mystery. Well, how did it get out of that? How did it get out? And you got some um, some crazy speculation that, well, you know, uh, grave robber stuff. Well, they wouldn't have left the wrap intact, or they wouldn't have left the wrap behind, most likely. They would have took the body the grave clothes, and just gone. If they were going to steal the body. This might also deal with the idea of the swoon theory. Swoon theory was the idea that Jesus didn't really die on the cross. He just fainted. Uh, he passed out, if you will. And they wrapped him up and buried him. But, you know, being in the cave of uh, slightly cooler and he revived and therefore he was able to get out of the grave clothes. Well, if this stuff is still intact and looks like a body was still in it. I don't know about you, but if I get tangled up in something, uh, you know, it's not going to look neat and tidily, tidy uh, when I get out of it, you know. So um, probably also takes care of the idea that the body was eaten by animals. That uh, seems to be the conclusion of the Jesus seminar, that the body was eaten by animals. So when Peter gets into the tomb, he makes an intense survey of the grave clothes. He makes an intense study of it. He looks, he studies it. Um, Luke says that, uh, this is what about Peter at this point? Luke 24, 9, 12. Huh? Yeah, he ran to the tomb, but what was his reaction after he looks. He went away and he was wondering what, what had happened. 
he went away. He was wondering what had happened. Uh, other versions use the word amazed. And that word amazed is a constant, uh, uh, is used frequently throughout the book of Luke, that people were amazed. Um, it's used in Luke 1, 63, 825, the 825 passages where Jesus uh, calms one of the storms and the disciples are amazed. Uh, Luke 11, 14, 24, 12, and 24, 41. He's amazed. Um, <clears throat> What does amazed mean here? Does he mean, does it mean that he had faith? Or does it mean yeah, something spectacular has happened? I don't know what it is. I think it means in that situation, something spectacular has happened and they still don't understand it. They haven't figured out what happened. Right, right. Now we have a contrast between what Peter sees and what John sees. Larry's points uh, uh, well taken that you know he's he sees something has happened, but he doesn't know what it is. I think Peter's still confused at this point. He's 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 saying how he's still thinking in his head. How could I have done that? But also in the story. It's important to note that they still went to Peter to tell the story. Peter was still considered part of the group. Even though he had failed, he's still considered part of the group. And maybe Many of them, especially the 11, is taking it into point where well, we failed to. Maybe not like Peter, but we left him alone. And, you know, you may toy with that idea because, uh, Scriptures may imply that they were supposed to have left. And maybe if they had a left, Peter had a left, he wouldn't have been a denier. But that wasn't the way it was going to work out. And Jesus told him so. You know, Greg, there's a lot of, a lot of human emotions going on here. Yeah. Uh, so don't apply. Yeah. Uh, the, the ladies go to the tomb. The interesting point to me is how they thought they were going to move the stones. Yeah. You know, you, you got that in there. You got the same leader that's been for months and trying to discredit Jesus. And they didn't cover the one spot they needed to kill this kid, this whole story. They didn't make sure that he stayed in the tomb. Right. So they they failed miserably in what they wanted to do there. Yeah. But I think they also started to go off in Peter's head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jesus told him, You're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna deny me three times. All these things are going off in his head. Yeah. And and the ladies, the same thing. All these things are going off they had heard. Yeah. And kept in their hearts. And, and a lot of stuff going on in there, trying to figure out what's going on and what Jesus had said, what he had told them, and how they how they discerned 
what he's saying. But yeah. it's different for each individual. Right, right. Uh, Chris made the point that there's a lot of human emotion going on in the story at this point. There's confusion. You know, they, they had heard, you know, Jesus say at various times, um, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be killed. And then I'm going to rise from the dead. But those things, for whatever reason, were not completely registered. They were not completely registered. <laughs> and then there is confusion, you know, like Peter. He was, he was, Jesus told him said, on that night, yeah, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, Lord, I wouldn't. I'll die with you. And then he does it. And he's devastated. So he looks and he's amazed. He knows something spectacular has happened. Beginning of faith? Yeah, maybe. He knows that something spectacular has happened. Luke 20, uh, I mean, John 20, verse 8. says that John looks at the same stuff that Peter is seeing, the stuff that Peter's looked intently at. John sees and he believes. So what's convinced him? The stone rolled away, the empty tomb, the arrangement of the grave gloves. Now, the next verse uh, makes the point. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus was to rise from the dead. Faith in the book of John is receptive to the idea that God is active. It may not be complete at that point, but it's receptive to the activity of God. And that's the way the book of John starts in John chapter 2, verse 11, <coughs> with the changing of the water into wine. They see the signs and they believe but they don't fully understand at this point. The reason they don't fully understand at this point is they do not know the scriptures. Uh, maybe that's the wrong word to use. They do not fully understand the scriptures. Uh, when Jesus talks to the disciples on the Emmaus Road, which may have been a man and a wife team. I don't know why we assumed that it's two men. Okay. 
just something interesting to think about, toy with. Um, but what does he do with them? He explains to them from Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets that all of these things must happen to the Christ. So there's several scriptures that you can think of from the Old Testament that maybe they didn't quite grasp yet, uh, such as Psalm 1610. Um, I think that's the one that says his body uh, will not decay. Um, others, Psalm 110, 1 and 4, 118, 22 through 24. Isaiah 53, 10 through 12, Hosea 6 to Jonah 1, 7. Specific scriptures that give the idea of a resurrection after three days. Or give the resurrection. Or maybe as Paul uses it, it's just the scriptures as a whole. And we mentioned the Luke 24, 44 through 47, where he said, you know, the scriptures testify of me. All of them point to me. And, you know, for my warped brain, uh, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. It's kind of hard to see. You know, these people brought up on very stubborn. They were, and they could read the scriptures and, and knew of them where God actually interacted with man, mm -hmm. done some pretty astonishing things. And they were far removed from that. Yeah. At that particular time. And God was about to or had put Jesus in place as God interacting with men at that time. And he just didn't see it. Right. And, you know, like all of us. Yeah. Just didn't see it. Just and didn't see it. it was not belief or not, so much time had went by. They just really didn't equate what they read was happening. Yeah. They didn't equate what they were reading with what was happening. Well, let me throw this one out here to you. How does the book of Judges have anything to do with Jesus? Toy with that one for a while. The book of Judges. You got some bizarre stories in that book. Especially the way those last three chapters work. But the scriptures point to Jesus. They point to the resurrection. Now up to this point, nobody has seen the risen Christ. They've got evidence that the resurrection may have taken place. John and the women have the beginnings of faith and possibly Peter does too. He's amazed. He's thinking about it. He's trying to figure it out. But then the story in both places in 
with the disciples going home. They're still contemplating. They're not talking about it. They just go home. Questions, answers, comments, disagreements, things to throw at me. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs>